then what you have to And Chris, I'm hoping you can hear me. I can hear you, and thank you so much, Rebecca. I appreciate it. So first of all, I want to thank Rebecca and Autotask for uh, making this time slot available for us to give us a chance to, uh, to chat with uh, the community. Uh, hopefully I can add some value to your day and your week and your, uh, your quarter. I'm um, going to start by just giving quick background about myself uh, and, and a little bit about the, the why IT Glue exists. I also want to just say uh, quickly that we've, got, we've also got today on the line um, Dave Goldie. He's our Vice President of Sales. Uh, he's based with me here in Vancouver. Uh, west coast of Canada, uh, and he's going to be uh, on the line just just to in case we have questions popping up. Uh, he'll be able to help address those uh, when we get to the Q and A section as well. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, freeing minds is is really if if people ask me what we do at IT Glue, I say freeing minds, and the reason we say that is is that information is really the core and the heart of uh, of most IT businesses. Uh, any any IT business really, information is key. And what we found and what, what most people uh, agree with is that the information that is necessary to run an IT business, an IT practice, uh, is often locked in the minds of people, uh, locked in various tools and systems and, and very hard to, to find, very hard to educate other people on that information. So we landed on Freeing Minds as our core purpose. It's our reason for, for being at IT Glue. And, and the idea is that we take information, we remove it from people's heads, we put it in a central location uh, and make it sort of ease the, the burden of having that information not readily available. That being said, I'm not going to talk too much about IT Glue today. I'm going to talk more about the problem itself and, and, and the impact financially and, and otherwise of, of uh, this information gap. So uh, I'll tell you a little bit about my background. I'm the, the CEO founder of IT Glue, um, as I said, based here in Canada. Before IT Glue, I've been in I've been in a, the MSP space for a very very long time. I think from a from a you know industry perspective, I started uh, a company in 2002 called Fully Managed. Uh, it's a Western Canadian MSP. I started it probably like many of you on on this uh, call. Uh, it was myself and another person, two of us. Uh, over the course of from 2002 to 2009, we grew that business from a couple of people uh, up to about 10, 12 people, and then from 2009 to 2016, fast forward to today, uh, the company is uh, very much thriving. It's about, it got about 60 employees. Um, I've transitioned about three years ago out of that business. Uh, we've got a CEO, a COO, and a, and a senior ma uh, management team that now run the business, but I'm still uh, on the board, and so I, I kind of keep my finger on the pulse of what's happening in the MSP space. And, and truthfully, it was uh, a lot of the inspiration for IT Glue came from my uh, background uh, in the MSP world. So, uh, the one thing that I learned, probably the biggest thing and the biggest takeaway for, for today that I learned from, from being in the MSP space is it's a difficult business. And, um, and so it's a, diff it's a particularly difficult business if you don't make money at it because, you know, we are uh, at the forefront of, of technical issues. Uh, there's a lot of variety that gets thrown at us. And um, the number one takeaway that I learned in, in taking the business, not only from, you know, say 10 people to 60 people, it wasn't all about the growth. It was more about the profit. And I realized that uh, when I was, you know, around 20 employees and, and going really, really hard on the business, but actually not making any money uh, at the end of the day. So I'm going to touch on, on how uh, we made that transformation to the point where today Fully Managed not only is, is running at a very high uh, uh, revenue rate, but also delivering the bottom line profit that I like to see as an investor around the 22, 24% range. So quickly, uh, the IT Glue story. Um, We've had, a, we've had a, a great rise to fame, I guess, in the last couple of years. We, we started selling uh, in 2013. Uh, we, one year ago today, we were probably around 10 staff, and, and we've grown uh, to, to around 50 today. We expect to be about 100 employees by the end of 2017. Uh, and, you know, very close to 2,000 MSP and IT service provider partners globally, and around 30,000 IT professionals logging in and using IT Glue every day. So we're very proud of that. Uh, we have a large community of Autotask uh, and AEM uh, users in, in our community, so we're very happy to have a chance to talk to you a little bit more today about that. So I'm going to start with a little story, and very much ties into my MSP story. Um, and I call it the tale of two companies. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll talk financially about th what this means later, but let's take an example of, of two managed service companies or two IT service providers, both, let's say, uh, doing about 
two million in, in sales. Um, both are in the same city, let's call it London for the sake of this call. Both uh, have the same number of employees, let's call it 20. These companies exist in, in pretty much any market segment. And one of the things, one of the fallacies that I've learned is that you can find two companies that look the same on the outside but deliver very different results. So let's just do the example of walk into one company, the company's putting zero dollars to the bottom line, walk into another company, that company's putting 25% to the bottom line. There's obviously clearly something different about the two companies. And I think it's the last oversight in, in the IT uh, service provider industry is the, the value of, of process and the value of uh, why is it that process is actually actually the differentiating factor between those two companies. So I'm going to cover off a couple of concepts to support that. The absence of uh, the company, by the way, when you talk, think of this scenario, company A, MSP A, MSP B, one company is making money. The one that's not making money, it feels a little bit like this. It's chaotic. And generally the chaos, uh, when, you, when you see the chaos, it doesn't feel great either from a staff perspective or from a client perspective. So it's, why, why is there chaos? Uh, why, why does one company feel chaotic and the other not? There's, there's a whole bunch of things that go into that. There's people, a process, and technology. But today I'm going to focus on the process bucket. This is a really interesting study, so probably everybody's familiar with IDC. The typical uh, IT person spends 21% of their time, and this is a, quite a staggering number, so it's worth, worth thinking about this. 21% of their time, and this is in US dollars, uh, looking for information. So if you actually factor that into the, and this is actually not in the MSP world, so typically this number is a bit worse for MSPs or IT service providers where you're supporting multiple customer environments. So put a dollar figure on this number and then try to figure out why is that, why is there so much time waste? And I think you're going to find that it comes back to the information gap. Typically it's coming back to the inability for a new staff member to get up to speed on the environment in total, or someone who's never seen an environment to come in, step in, and be, be productive in that environment quickly. Supported by Microsoft as well, uh, Eric Ligman, a, a senior VP at Microsoft, IT workers are spending 20% of their time looking for information. If you do the math on what this costs you, uh, and, and there's a really important concept here that's not just the hard labor associated with Inform the information gap, which is, yes, you're paying for that time. 20% of the time, you're paying someone to basically sit there and look for information. But the key factor is what would they be doing with that 20% of their time if they hadn't been wasting it? And the answer is they would have been doing more service work or they would have been doing more billable work. And so when you factor in the opportunity cost, you get some fairly staggering numbers that start to pop out uh, from this. There was a guy, Vern Harnish, that I probably around 10, 11 years ago, and I, hopefully everybody knows Fern Harnish. He's the author of the Rockefeller Habits and a, and a very well-respected thought leader in business in general. He said this at a, at a business event, a non-IT business event that I was at. The first company that embraces lean in any industry will dominate their peers. Lean is basically the, the process of removing waste out of a business. So um, they estimate the Toyota production system is, is sort of the foundation for lean. In, in that system, they estimate that uh, about 60%, 6-0% of the time, a typical business is doing work that doesn't actually value the customer. And that's how Lean defines waste, is you're doing work that doesn't value the customer. And so this was, had a profound impact on me and actually was one of the reasons I, I actually started IT Glue is I, I, I thought, this is not right. Um, we need to find a way to um, help businesses be lean and not spend uh, unnecessary time on things that are not meaningful. If you put it into numbers for a typical IT provider, and I apologize, this is not in pounds, uh, and most of, the, most of you are probably operating in pounds, but it's the same, it would just replace the symbol. Uh, a 10-person company will waste approximately, using these same numbers, $200,000 every year in productivity due to information uh, lock, or information loss, or information inaccessibility. So this is partly the hard cost, as I alluded to, and partly the opportunity cost. Uh, and so this is quite staggering. It's, it's, $20,000 per employee per year. Um, and so how do, we, how do we battle this? This is, a, this is a real issue. 
I want you to, if you have a few minutes, you don't need to give us your contact info, but you can go to this waste calculator that we have on our website. And it helps to highlight these, these concepts I talked about. So you punch in how many technical staff, what's their annual salary, what's the average margin that you're looking for from an IT uh, person. So typically, you know, if it's, if you bill out uh, at 70 pounds uh, an hour, you want to get 35 pounds an hour in profit. Um, and then you ask, take the slider and estimate your, the, the actual time you are currently wasting due to bad documentation or due to information gap. And you can slide it right back to zero if you think you're 100% efficient, or you can slide it down to one or 2%, and you'll see that even at the very low percentage points, it's a very, very costly uh, issue. So we like to throw this out there as just a bit of an awareness thing. This time is being spent, and so what can we do to, to start to, to drive uh, improvements in that area, which will effectively uh, result in bottom line performance. The other thing I want to highlight around uh, this topic is, is around the information gap um, and freeing minds is your nightmare IT guy. So Jason Bourne in this case uh, is the epitome of the, the person that is a, a risk to your business. So uh, he's running around, he's got all the information about all of your clients in his head and you know he's struck by a bus. Uh, or he wins the lottery, or he, you know, uh, moves to Majorca, whatever the case may be. This is another source of, of, of real pain for IT business owners because this information is really should be a company asset. And when it stops becoming a company asset, or when it never starts becoming a company asset, then you're sort of beholden to um, the staff that have that information in their head. So. What I found in, in running a, and, and growing our MSP to a very large size is that once you can get this concept away from the business where information is a company asset, it very much changes the culture of the business. It becomes more collaborative. Uh, people are employed not because of the information that they have, um, uh, but because they're, you know, they're great for your company. Uh, and I think this is a bit of a transition in the, in the IT service industry where uh, information, the information hostage situation is, is slowly uh, ceasing to be uh, acceptable. So, the other place that um, this issue rears its, its ugly head is around uh, ambiguity. And ambiguity pops, pops up frequently in the, in the IT service provider space because you, uh, if you have a person A and person B, Jim and Sally, and, and Sally doesn't know anything about Jim's clients and vice versa, uh, it creates a lot of ambiguity. And when, you, when a customer experiences that ambiguity, it doesn't feel very good to them. The staff don't enjoy the ambiguity, and it, it, again, leads to that chaos situation that I mentioned. So the more we can remove ambiguity from an IT uh, service ecosystem, the more uh, freed everybody feels and, and the more we can work on, on um, profit-generating activities. Anybody's uh, familiar with Paul Dippel? He's a, he's a fantastic MSP financials expert, and he talks about a concept called operational maturity level. In fact, we use this uh, almost in every facet of, of our MSP business to, to, uh, to score ourselves. So how mature are we uh, from a uh, process perspective? How mature are we from a technology perspective? How mature is each one of our customers as compared to our uh, operational maturity standard for a ideal customer? And what we found was um, we had to get to beyond level two so level one is a bit like a firefight. Level two is sort of a bit chaotic. Level three is stable. Then we move up to level four where you start to be able to innovate and create new products and, and, and actually uh, deliver more value to your customers. So we use this concept extensively around, uh, around how do we get to a point where we're innovating. The other thing that, uh, touching on the chaos and, and lack of innovation is, is the causes, the sort of social causes of chaos. And, and these are things that I think a lot of people forget exist in an IT business. Um, and they're exacerbated by information gap. So, you know, when people are inefficient, uh, when people are, uh, can't find the information they're looking for, they're tired, they're stressed, they're working too hard, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it doesn't feel good to staff. And it's very hard to maintain it. It's hard enough to maintain a great com company culture in an IT support business. Uh, without these elements uh, exacerbating it. And of course, we, we land on this, and if you're in a fixed fee uh, IT service provider market, you know, you, when, you, when you start working with, with a new customer, they say, everything is broken, what am I paying you for? And then as soon as you take, you know, all the steps necessary to stabilize their IT environment and make it all run 
beautifully, of course, the next thing they say to you is, nothing is broken, what am I paying you for? So as we start evolving down this, uh, the chain and, and increasing the maturity of our, our businesses, uh, we started realizing we had to deliver more value in different ways. It wasn't around break, fix. It wasn't something broken, we fixed it, and that's why you feel value. We started to add, add value around VCIO and uh, new services that we could layer in, like advanced antivirus or security services or, uh, or, or whatever the case may be, new services that add value. And the biggest one, I think, for the, for, to consider in, in, as an MSP or an IT provider is this one. Innovation is impossible when you're in a chaotic situation. Um, so, you know, I see a lot of MSPs that, that think, well, I want to add a brand new service into my stack and I want to sort of sell this, this product to, to all my customers. The first step is to get that stability in place because you need to have a stable environment with happy customers and by the way happy customers are generally happy if they're getting a reliable service level um, then you can reflect and start to build and innovate and create services that are uh, that are more valuable to those customers over time and the question i this actually came from one of my mentors which was you know we, we're in business for a reason and what is the reason you know what why are we here uh and are we here by default or are we here by design? And that's a great question to ask, and I continuously continue to ask it. Uh, you know, in any in any facet of the business, this is how our sales team is is put together. Is this by default or is this by design? Uh, and the more we can move to everything by design, uh, the more we can standardize and simplify uh, and, and plan for for these things, the, the better the, the business feels. This one is I'm not even going to say anything about this. This is just a bit of a joke, but there isn't an app that can help you. Or is there? So I want to just quickly touch on a, th a couple things that, that I've uh, identified that, um, and, and not, nothing new, that make a, an IT business profitable and successful. Uh, and here are the three. So people, process, technology. Uh, in really, all of these three areas need to be working properly. And they're, they're, it's very complex to get all three working. And they're all kind of related. So. As an example, um, I'll give an example. Like on the people side, uh, obviously we want to attract and retain great people. But if we have a chaotic uh, experience for those people and we can't pay those people properly uh, because maybe our technology, uh, the third bucket, is, is poor, it's very difficult to pay the people properly, very difficult to retain the people. So I'll touch very quickly on the technology stack, very relevant since we're on a call with Autotask today. Uh, having the best technology in the business is something that uh, I've learned is absolutely critical. And it's in every area, whether it's backup, uh, whether it's your endpoint management, whether it's your, uh, your PSA, uh, whether it's the operating systems that you support, and so on and so forth. Having all of that stack identified and if you have 100 customers, as much as you can standardizing across those 100 customers, uh, the more standardized it is, the easier it is to train people to support, and the more you can do with less people. So that's a key factor on, on the wedge of profit. The one that I think is often left, and it's probably um, by design, I've, I've put it here as the largest cog, is process. And I think process has been the afterthought in the IT space, but process is really the differentiating factor in my mind. If everybody on this call is using Autotask and everybody on this call is using AEM and everybody on this call uh, is using a, a antivirus X, what makes one of you more profitable than the other? And process is the key. Um, and examples of this, what, what good process can do for you is allows you to do things both faster and cheaper. Uh, how do you do it faster? By defining a process, you know, obviously having a standardized technology stack, you can have the same people uh, doing the task faster because it's well documented. Uh, cheaper is probably the, the one that I, uh, I would say it's the number one thing that allowed our, our MSP to be very, very profitable. We figured out how to use lower cost labor to do the same work. And in order to do that, we had to, A, so an example, we had to pick a, uh, a firewall platform. It doesn't matter which one it is, but we had to pick one because we realized that we couldn't hire a, a, a young, uh, inspired young tech out of, out of uh, school and say, 
we need you to learn how to support five or six different firewalls, as well as the backup, as well as the workstations, as well as everything else. So we said, we, we, in our case, we picked Meraki. Doesn't matter what you pick, pick SonicWall, pick XYZ. And we said, that's the only one we're gonna support. And so then we've created procedures for how to install it, how to update it, how to uh, move it, how to do failover, how to apply a traffic shaping policy, whatever the case may be. As a result of that, and as a result of those processes being built, we could now take a junior tech and say, uh, someone has asked us to block YouTube on the firewall. And we didn't have to go to the level three highly paid engineer to do that task. We were able to take that task and give it to literally anyone in the business. So the key factor for being profitable is, is being able to take that, uh, take those tasks and basically outsource them to lower cost resources, even inside the business, or if, if you so choose outside the business, which is another key thing you can do with good processes, you can actually begin to look at those types of relationships. Are there pieces of this that I could outsource that aren't customer facing that would allow me to be more profitable? And so those kind of decisions become possible. So going back to the company A and company B uh, scenario, I want to just show you both companies. So this is company A, uh, and this is a you know very typical uh, MSP, doing two million in sales. Uh, putting 500,000, so 25% of the bottom line, very similar to my MSP uh, at, a, at a smaller size. What you're going to see when I go to company two, uh, company B, the difference is in the cost of goods sold. So for an MSP business, and this is an MSP business, the biggest cost is obviously labor. And cost of goods sold uh, by the book for MSPs is labor. So when you flip over to company B, you're going to see one company is spending 1.2 million on labor, one company is spending 700 thousand on labor. The difference, you'll notice SG&A, uh, sales and general administration expenses are consistent and that's because both these companies are, let's, let's say they're both in London again, so the rent is the same, you know, the parking is the same, uh, lunches, the Maserati, whatever it happens to go into that bucket is always, is all the same. We end up with zero net income for company B and as I highlighted on the, on the last slide before this, company B has failed to figure out how to reduce their costs of delivering the service through automation, through great documentation, through great technology, and most, and obviously great people. So it's it's really interesting to look at these things and say, you know what, on, on the surface, and I've thought this before, if I could acquire a, an MSP and take everything except, just take the people out, and we would, I could make that company profitable. So it's very interesting to start thinking about this is, is what can be the impact financially of, of process. So. I don't need to tell you that obviously I'm, there's a theme here. Uh, I believe strongly that that process is the cure to creating that value for the business and creating that consistency and execution that is often, often missing from MSPs. And you know, if you get some fear, and then that's one of the things we get questions a lot is, well, I, if I get so efficient, what am I gonna do with my staff? And this is the one I like to, to think. I mean, we're not in business to necessarily stagnate. So I like to say, Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this next year, we're going to grow 20% faster than we did last year, and we're going to add no more employees. How are we going to do that? There's only one answer. We've got to have great technology. We've got to swap out the people if they, if, they're, if they need to be swapped, and we have to have a fantastic process. And it's not, it doesn't happen overnight, but it's something that you can do in a one-year type period if, you, if you're committed to, to this idea. And by the way, this is exactly what I did in fully managed to take our bottom line from zero to 22%. And I can tell you it's a lot more fun running a business that's doing 10 million a year at 22% profit than a company that's doing uh, 3 million at 0% profit. It's a lot more fun. So let's talk about the, the kind of the value and how you, how you position uh, making positive change to, to, val to process and documentation internally. Biggest things, onboarding of new employees, um, the ability to bring somebody in. This was a, this is a very interesting factor. If you, if you were to think to yourself, how long does it take me to bring a new technician into the business and have them be fully productive? And if that number is months or even you know, a year before they're sort of 80% effective, I, I challenge you to put a little bit of work into analyzing what's that, what is that costing you from a, from a salary perspective and from an opportunity cost perspective. The obvious inner value is productivity, making your people more efficient, and as I mentioned, uh, being able to take the, what is perceived as a source of like frustration and, and annoyance and making 
a culture of documentation and a culture of, of process that people really value and, and becomes a part of the fabric of your company. Externally, the thing that often gets forgotten is that we're, your customers get to experience your waste. And as they talk about this in Lean a lot. So if you're not productive, you know, I like to highlight if you're doing work for a sales rep for one of, at one of your clients and you're not being productive, it's completely, they completely absorb that waste on their side. So something that should have taken half an hour takes an hour. Yes, it costs you money, but it may have cost them even more money. And I'll tell you, this is something they very much recognize. If they, they have a feeling of, of how something should go, and if it doesn't go that way, um, they're aware of it. Uh, whether or not you know, that's, that's grounds for canceling a, a, an agreement with you or not, they're aware of it. So providing better customer service, providing compelling value in, in the ability to allow a customer of yours to share in the documentation, share in the process with you, uh, iterate those processes. And of course, trust, you know, that the hostage situation that was 10 years ago, very common. I've got all your documentation. I've got all your, uh, your processes for your business in my head, and I'm not going to share them with you. If you leave me, I'm going to, you lose all that. Uh, we see, we're seeing a change in that where now people are saying, I'll give it all to you and you're going to work with me because you value, uh, the partnership and you value, um, uh, working together. So quickly, and I'm going to be able to, uh, Shortly get over over to Lano. Lano, sorry if I'm going to go maybe two or three minutes long. Hopefully that's okay. Um, I want to just touch on what happened and why was documentation and, uh, such a, a problem and why does everybody roll their eyes when they think of the word documentation? So what we figured out, and this is um, this is essentially our secret sauce and how we made IT Glue a success, is we recognize that there's there's three key overlapping areas of documentation. There is uh, building blocks, and building blocks are the list of things that you need to uh, to be able to develop a process. So things like passwords, domain names, people, companies, sites, uh, um, SSL certificates, components of documentation that are basically lists, something that you might build in Excel, for example, or, or put in a, in a config item. Structural. Uh, often almost entirely missing from most uh, IT practices, which is, can think of structural as the blueprints. So if I'm gonna step into a, a office tower and I'm an electrician and there's no blueprints or, or no, uh, no map of how the, that electrical is, is set up, how challenging is it for me to actually support that building and, and go do some electrical work? That's exactly what's happening in IT day in and day out where uh, where a new IT person is looking at an environment that they have no understanding of, uh, and it's sort of like this, it's Groundhog Day, they have to relearn the environment again and again and again, and every time you add a new person or you put a, a person with a new site, they've got to relearn that information. So if you can find a way to, to put the blueprints in a way that's very consistent and standardized, it means that you can throw a technician at a site he's never seen and he can pick up and understand the lay of the land very quickly. And then last but not least, procedural, also known as knowledge base. So this is how do I do things? And this is something that people usually do in Word. Um, by the way, structural, the, the blueprints is something that if you are, are doing it, you might be doing it in Visio. Uh, as an example, I'll use the, the Word equivalents or the Office equivalents. Procedural, knowledge base. This is something you, you know, how do I do this? Steps one through 10 with screenshots. So if you think of all these things and then you start realizing, if you ask yourself, where do these pieces live? And you'll start realizing what we realize, which is, this is these are all in different systems and they're all in different brains. And a lot of times it's straight up not documented in any way. So of course, when you can overlay these things in a single system, uh, whether that's, if, if it works for you with the Microsoft Office Suite, then we encourage you to use that. We think we've got a solution that allows all those three areas to be covered in one single web-based platform. Quickly talk about our integration. Uh, IT Glue, obviously I haven't given a demo of, of IT Glue today and I'm not planning on doing that. Um, if you do have questions on IT Glue, there'll be an opportunity to follow up with us after. Uh, we'll give you a link shortly to, to, if you're interested in having a further conversation, we'll, we'll connect you up. But I wanna talk about the importance of the, the integration between Autotask and Autotask AEM and IT Glue. So one of the biggest pieces around documentation is the automation, the ability to take information that's already being created and, and automated through AEM or Autotask, pull it in and create documentation around that stuff. So if I'm gonna document something like virtualization or backup or uh, line of business apps, 
it's very, very important that I have building blocks for that information. So through our integration, we pull that information into IT Glue and make it very easy, uh, continuously update that stuff so that you can create the documentation on the fly. So in a, in a, uh, in a nutshell, here's a, a few things that we do. Uh, knowledge management is probably the biggest bucket. So if we're going to use kind of ITIL type terms, knowledge management, standard operating procedures, knowledge base articles, uh, call it a configuration database enhancer, uh, because you know obviously Autotask has, has some of that functionality, but we build on top of that. Um, asset management, same sort of thing. Be able to create relationships between all these things so that if someone's going to reboot a server, they know what the impact will be on the rest of, of the systems on the network. Uh, create a lot of security and, and um, version control around um, a lot of the assets. So, you know, if someone's looking at a password, what, uh, it looks like John changed that password last week. Well, show me what that password used to look like, that kind of thing all built in. And then of course the automation thing which is continuing to build and we're integrating to more and more systems to allow you to pull information into IT Glue and automate uh, the building of that documentation so that you don't have to uh, do it manually. Oops, pardon me. Um, there we go. So um, just quickly touch on uh, the Autotask partnership in general. Uh, we a, a very good percentage of, of IT Glue's customers are Autotask customers, and um, I can say that on the AEM side, tremendous uh, uptick in our in our customers that are using a AEM. So uh, we're very excited about the partnership. We have a very complementary solution. Um, we have, from an integration perspective, in this right now we're connected with with Autotask, and as I said, Autotask AEM. Uh, the AEM integration is fantastic. We get so much good feedback around the ability for someone to look at a piece of documentation and see how much disk space is available on this server. It's tremendous to be able to see that when you're building documentation. Here's a screenshot of, uh, it's hard to see, so we're going to leave it at, we'll give you some more info on, on Autotask BSA integration later. I didn't want to focus too much on product today. And as I said, uh, the, the uh, Autotask AEM integration where you can just sort of faintly see here uh, what's going on with uh, real-time access to that asset from IT Glue in Autotask. So uh, we're very excited. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys today, and we will have some questions at the end. Um, so uh, we'll leave that for the end. The one thing I wanted to highlight here, if you would like a copy of these slides, uh, we're, we're, we can offer it to you as a PDF. So if you'd like to grab those or you'd like to connect with us, uh, itglue.com forward slash webinar, and uh, you'll also send you an ebook on on this process piece and how it can drive uh, profit for your business. So, thank you. I went a couple minutes over. Hope that's okay, and I will hand it back over to Rebecca. Thank you very much indeed, Chris. Um, really, really, some really interesting stats in that webinar. Um, I mean, I was pretty staggered by um, by some of the stats you came out with right at the beginning. Um, be interesting to hear from from the attendees who are taking part in the webinar where um, whether they're finding the same kind of operational inefficiencies. Um, uh, so yeah, if you, if you have any comments or questions about that, we'd really like to hear from you. Just type your um, your questions in the Q and A box, and we'll get to them at the end of the webinar. <clears throat> um, so thanks very much, Chris. Really informative. Don't worry about running over. Um, we we um, we. Don't worry about that when the content is informative and useful. Um, so I'll hand over to, to Len, our SVP of Channel Development for Autotask, and he's going to take us through um, how Autotask Unified Platform helps you become more efficient and avoid the chaos. Len, did you come up with that title? No, I thought maybe you or Stacy did, but it certainly <laughs> ties it certainly ties to Chris's content, so uh, I Absolutely. think it works. So Absolutely. Thanks, Chris, I'll for... let you uh, let you take it away then. All righty, I'm looking forward to getting the ball myself. So yeah, Chris, thanks for that great content and, and giving us this title because I don't know what I would have called this section if uh, Stacy or Rebecca didn't do this title here. So. In any event, Len DiCostanzo here, SVP Channel Development. I uh, had a few titles here at Autotask, so many of you who may know me will see that's a, a newer title here as we're really focused on helping our customers, helping the community in general, 
really become more efficient and avoid the chaos. I mean, it really just rides right along what Chris uh, shared with you because, again, it is about reducing your cost uh, and certainly uh, adding to your profitability. So before I get rolling, I, I just want to highlight a couple of stats here. We put out a survey uh, every year, Metrics That Matter, and uh, the focus, you know, seemed to come back all around endpoint management. And again, as you document your infrastructures that you're supporting, your client networks, you are pretty much gathering information on every endpoint and the information on that endpoint. So it, it stands to reason that the survey results would come back pointing to endpoint management as the number one revenue driver in 2016 because there's a lot of revenue to be made around endpoints from deploying software on those endpoints, uh, agents for various pieces of software and per uh, IT glue gathering that info and producing great reports that you can act on. Uh, second uh, stat here, very interesting, but you know, it's certainly something you can understand. The number one client security concern is around endpoints. You know, typically those endpoints uh, are used by users in some way, shape, or form, and compromising those endpoints uh, can certainly compromise the entire network, as well as the relationship of the IT service provider uh, supporting that account. And 55% of our more than 1,100 respondents to the survey said they see continued uh, significant growth in endpoints that they manage. And that's good because that means you're getting your fair share because Gartner says over 26 billion endpoints will be in use globally by 2020. So all these stats really point to the fact you do have to be organized and structured in how you're managing your endpoints. And of course, uh, if you deliver better endpoint management, you're going to thrive. And a lot of, lot of things going on around endpoint management you know, from actually, you know, buying and deploying the right endpoints to then supporting and managing them and uh, continuing to evolve so you're staying ahead of threats and things like that. So what I want to chat a little bit about is Autotask, PSA, endpoint management, really the linchpin of our unified platform and really the only unified PSA and RMM that helps you become more efficient, reduce costs, and increase profitability. And again, right around what we're Chris was talking about, it does come down to efficiency. And we look to do that by unifying the people, process, and data that you're out there managing and supporting. And that's where Autotask PSA comes into play. And if you really look at process, it extends across the entire business. And we like to say we help you generate revenue across four critical stages that you execute in your business and, and look to secure clients for life. And it starts with that initial sales process where you're looking to generate some new revenue, whether it's a new logo client or your existing business. And that's where Autotest CRM gives you that opportunity to track accounts, contact information, build opportunities, track your pipeline. And then, of course, as you win that solution, you need to win that uh, project, you need to implement that solution. That's where our project management capabilities come into play, giving you the chance to work from template projects so you're real efficient in kicking off new projects. And as, as you implement that solution, tracking your phases and contacts, uh, phases and tasks, excuse me, tracking your time and expense, and then getting that invoice on the street pretty efficiently. And that's really that second critical stage, the first one being you've got to win the project. Second, you've got to implement that project because typically you're bidding on a project. Even if it's a managed service engagement, you have to go out, remediate that environment, like Chris said, and get it up in, into your standards. So you're doing a remediation engagement even before you deliver managed services. If you do a great job on that project, you come on in and deliver your managed service and support. That's where your test service desk comes into play and all the tools built into that service desk really gives you that opportunity to get into that fourth critical stage where you are that trusted advisor. You become that IT department, or as I like to call it, the business technology department for your clients. And it all starts over again as you execute your monthly operational review meetings, your quarterly business reviews, and you're proposing new work. Uh, you then go back into that consulting stage and look to win new business as you're in that client over and over. And that mission-critical data flow across those key areas, those, those key critical stages of developing that client for life, all in one spot inside of Autotask, your single repository of data. And as Chris mentioned, a very nice integration, almost bordering on unification with IT glue 
uh, across uh, Autotask and Endpoint Management. We have over 140 integrations into Autotask. Again, looking to simplify your management of your client environments. And it's not just about PSA, it is about uh, those endpoints, and that's where Autotask Endpoint Management comes into play. It's not integrated with our PSA, it is a, our PSA, and really the linchpin of our unified platform strategy. And here's where you're going out, collecting that data on those devices, mingling it with IT glue and the great documentation solutions Chris mentioned, very nice integration, again, bordering on unification, and, and surely we'll, we'll continue to develop that as you go out, audit your endpoints, collect that data, and then begin to deliver managed services to those endpoints, including some monitoring, self-healing capability, again, being more efficient, using less resources, as, as again, just following on what Chris said, where you're reducing headcount or perhaps keeping the same headcount, or even if you're growing headcount because you have more profitability, you're able to build new pieces of the business. But once you monitor, you self-heal, and if you monitor uh, an endpoint, something's up, getting that ticket into the Autotask service desk, and uh, of course being able to work that ticket and a report on it. So again, Autotask Endpoint Management, Autotask PSA, really creating that unified platform environment, giving you that single pane of glass where you can customize dashboards by role or by area of the business. Here you see what I like to call the unified platform dashboard, showing that entire business if you're the owner looking at uh, invoices that perhaps are ready uh, to be posted or invoicing and billings that have been posted already, looking at your most profitable accounts, uh, opportunities this month, again, all on one dashboard. Here you can see mingling in some of that endpoint management data, how many devices you're managing by type, new devices waiting to be jumped on to a contract, and these are some new assets uh, discovered uh, at your client location, again, making sure that uh, you're putting those devices on a contract. So again. The, the combination, the unification of data from endpoint management and PSA, really giving you that single pane of glass view into the business. And you don't have to be an owner. You could be, as I mentioned, dashboards based on uh, you know your role in the company. And here you see a sales manager, perhaps even a sales rep dashboard. And you can see opportunities in your pipeline. What does your funnel look like? And you know maybe you have one salesperson, maybe the owner's the salesperson, or maybe you have 10 salespeople doesn't really matter. You can create custom dashboards showing whatever you want. Here's opportunities that are going to close by territory, your top five reps. Again, great widgets. You get, uh, I believe, over over 50 customizable widgets when you buy Autotask uh, and you put it in your business. Customize it, tweak it, and then share those dashboards out across the company. Here you got a unified dashboard for easy analytics. Again, taking all of that info from endpoint management, those endpoints that now you have documented with IT glue, but now you can go out and generate new revenue, warranty dev uh, expiration, devices that are coming out of warranty. Maybe you still got some Windows XP devices out there. Maybe you got some memory issues or even disk space issues. All of this leading to upsell opportunity. And that's where Unified becomes more efficient. Here you see, it just showed you how you can run the business from those Unified dashboards and execute your role better and take those processes and automate and optimize those processes that end up reducing your overhead. And uh, we are seeing more than a billable hour per day being saved due to the unified platform. And of course, uh, you know that ticket being the central uh, point where you guys are typically working. And techs can do most of the work from that ticket. And of course, putting that self-healing uh, capability based on scripting with endpoint management really helps you heal uh, devices that are in trouble and doing it without a body and then showing it up in your dashboards. And again, just always like to highlight efficiency and profitability, discovering assets that perhaps maybe have been added by your client, you know, even though you don't want them to, but now as devices get added to that network, you're going to know you're going to be able to add them on the contracts and you'll never really service a device that's not under contract again. So we like to talk about helping you unify from beginning to end point. Uh, it's not, again, just about PSA and endpoint management. We know what you're going to do out there. You want to grab as much business as you can. So we've got our new product, Autotask Endpoint Backup, out there to help you 
either get new business or perhaps just add it into your existing managed service bundle and going out there and back up endpoints using uh, endpoint management and your IT glue documentation. I'm sure you're going to find that your end clients, even though you're telling them to put their data on the network, on the server, they're putting stuff on those local drives. They're using my documents. Here you can go on out and we have decommoditized this commodity solution endpoint backup using AEB and where you using AEM, you can actually deploy uh, these backup agents very seamlessly, designate files and folders to backup from a remote uh, implementation standpoint. And again, not have to visit any desktops, yet immediately backup those endpoints and protect that data. Typically, maybe C-level guys are not backing up. Uh, guys and gals are not putting their data on the server because they want to be overprotective of it. Now they will never lose a file again. They could lose that laptop, and uh, you have that nice, easy backup, tightly uh, unified into the PSA AEM unified platform stack, and of course, recovering from ransomware attacks. We know some rampant viruses out there now. And use endpoint backup to make a re make it a reality that you can recover really quickly from any type of uh, security or or uh, virus that comes into your client's location despite your uh, hour, hours of prevention. Here again, another solution uh, from beginning endpoint here, Autotask Workplace, our enterprise grade file sync and share solution. If backup is not enough, if you really don't want to go out and just restore files, backing them up, put them in the cloud with Autotask Workplace, all your data on your local drive, on your server, synced into the cloud, and of course, on an individual basis, now your data is protected. You can get it from any mobile device from anywhere, as long as you have an internet connection. And even without an internet connection, you can access your data. But once that data is in the cloud, you actually are backed up, and you never really have to restore, because it's always there for you to access. On top of that, share it out with your peers, with third parties, in a secure fashion. And that's where file sync and share comes into play increasing collaboration and really it's about security and taking control of your clients environments and this is actually a, a linchpin of our Autotest partner program Autotest workplace we have a great uh, set of content and collateral around endpoint backup and file sync and share a really robust partner program to help you put these products these solutions into your client environments increase your MRR your monthly recurring revenue so take advantage of the unified platform and how we take cost out of your business model by improving and automating the process of not only discovering the opportunity in your client base, but also rolling out the solution and, uh, and then monitoring those solutions that they are in fact doing what they said. So a real uh, nice way to generate revenue and make your business efficient. And here you can see some of the sounds of unification out there being able to deploy 4,000 endpoints in a single day, pretty big, from Richard Thompson, a sales director over at Central, one of our great clients out in the UK. And here you see Mika Thor talking about how he's going to save technicians more than 20 hours a month due to the Autotask Unified Platform. And uh, it's automated, and the enhancement to the environment, to the customer experience, is going to increase retention and grow profitably. So that's a, a little bit about Autotask. We are simple, scalable, scalable, and SaaS. We've got clients with 500 endpoints, 250 endpoints under management, on up to 20, 30,000 plus endpoints, all on the same system. We are 100% cloud, board in the cloud. Uh, we certainly know we've got competition out there, and they talk cloud, but uh, they were not born in the cloud. We are, and we know we need to be there all the time for you. Uh, we warrant three nines uptime in our contract, and we have four nines uptime, I believe, seven of our last eight years. So a really uh, efficient way for you to grow your business, manage your business, uh, and uh, certainly reduce costs and increase profitability. So it's time to unify. Take a look uh, at Autotask PSA. If you don't have it, if you are a PSA customer, look to expand how, how you work with Autotask. Bring an endpoint management. Get that unified platform in place. Take a look at Autotask Workplace and Endpoint Backup, and uh, really will definitely tie in with IT glue and get you more efficient and more profitable. So call your account manager. We'll complete the survey at the end of the webinar. Visit our website.
and uh, take advantage of, of the offerings we have. So, hey, back to you, Rebecca. Thanks for, for your time, and I always like to congratulate folks for taking time out of their day to, to jump in and, and learn and work on the business, and we'll talk again. Thanks, Len, and just want to say thank you to you for taking time out of your extremely busy schedule to um, share with us some of the benefits uh, that Autotask and the Unified Platform has to offer in combination with our vendor partners. Really appreciate it, Len. Thank you very much. So it. we're now going to move over to uh, the Q&A. Um, I've seen a bunch of questions coming through. I've been keeping an eye on those as, uh, as Len and Chris have been talking. Um, the first thing I want to um, do is just recap that um, Chris has agreed for um, his slides, as he said in his, his section of the webinar. Um, Chris, can you just remind us how, how people can get access to your slides? We've had a few people asking, asking for those. Yes, please. Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, just head over to itglue.com forward slash webinar. itglue.com forward very much. slash webinar, and, and that'll, uh, that'll do it. Excellent. And um, anybody who's registered for the webinar will receive a e an email with a link to the recorded webinar. That will happen early next week. So um, we've had quite a lot of people asking if they can get a recording. Um, so uh, the first question I'd like to address to, to both of you guys, actually, maybe Chris, if we can start with you, um, because you guys have both obviously come from a managed services background. You both have managed services providers. Um, and basically about your successes within that space, how have you had so much success scaling those businesses? Um, so Chris, I think you said you went from 10 employees to 60 in less yes. than five years, and IC Glue has had similar success. Can you tell us about, you know, what, what are some of the challenges? How did you overcome those? Yeah, you know, I think um, it, it's part of been a little, uh, my my perception is that I've just gotten smarter over the years. I guess I uh, we it took me a long time to figure out um, the value of of getting solutions that would help the business to be more efficient. I probably used to be very concerned with uh, you know if I was looking at buying something like IT Glue ten years ago as an example or buying Autotask, I would have been very I would have been thinking about the price. Um, and instead, I, I think I've realized that anything that allows me to automate any, I would actually buy any tool that would cost less than the, the equivalent of in human time. Because that's the, it's really, because it, it, it really allows that foundation for growth. So whether, if, if you want to remain completely flat and your business goal is to stay flat and just retain customers um, and, you, and you've got that working quite well, then, you know, probably just keep doing what you're doing. But what I learned, and, and you know, with, with Fully Managed, it took me, what, 10 years to get from 10 to, to 60 employees. Uh, with IT Glue, it took, it took about one year to go from 10 to 50. So um, there's no way of doing that without great technology. And, and obviously, you know, as I said, the, the, the people, the process, the technology, all those things have to be in line. But I think a lot of companies, um, fail to really invest in, in those uh, in the tools that allow them to be efficient and or that allow them to to grow without adding people. So I think it very much echoes, I don't know, if, Len, if you want to comment on that as well, but very much has been my experience. Yeah, no, I, I think that's uh, that's right. I think when you're when you're small, you're worried more about the expense side than, than the improvement side. Um, and how it might reduce cost. I think one of the benefits for me early in my business was I was a software developer. I would love sitting in front of a machine 16 hours a day, Chris, you know, <laughs> writing code. Isn't that crazy? But uh, it was all about creating efficiencies, and uh, little did I know, you know, it was more expensive to develop my own than buy it. So that, that's certainly one thing uh, that I've learned is, you know, sometimes it's better to buy than build, and that can get you more efficient. There's tons of great tools out there, and uh, that's really the key. And You mentioned it early on. You have to have the right tools in your business, no doubt about it. There's a ton of them out there, not only from running your business, much like Autotask, PSA, then there's service delivery side where you get endpoint management, and then you got those endpoints that you have to manage, IT glue coming into play, uh, certainly endpoint management, but then you have users 
and the software they use. And hopefully that's where endpoint backup comes in and workplace and you know antivirus and all those different solutions that are out there not only help you be more efficient but to deliver better service. And you just got to get out there and uh, decide you know you want to grow your business. I think that's the other key. I think a lot of guys out there, gals running running an IT service business tend to just do what they do every day. Uh, you, you just have to change. Make sure when you go to your events, make sure when you're listening to webinars like this, uh, that you just go out and do it. You know, you just you just have to do it. it is, uh, I guess that's where uh, Nike came up, right? Just do it. <laughs> you know, so uh, I, it took me a while to grow, and that's why I know I grew from one person to seven in maybe five years, but I started a long time ago. But I will tell you that when I finally realized what was up and, you know, you had to grow your business and you had to make moves, you know, I grew to 45 employees in, in about three years. So, you know, when the light bulb goes off, uh, it's a good day. And uh, so just keep working and, and get the right tools and just do it. Thanks, Len. Thanks, Chris. Um, really helpful advice from two very successful people. Um, so, yeah, thanks for, a lot for that. We've got some more questions, if you guys don't mind hanging on just a, a little bit longer. Um, Chris, we've had a, a, a question from one of our attendees. Um, how do I get people to document? <laughs> it's a very a general question, but hopefully one that you can answer. Yeah, you know, it's funny because we get that question, probably their number one question that we get asked. Everybody says, oh, I get the value. I get the value. Yes, I get it. Thank you. Stop talking. Um, but how do I get my people to do it? So what we found, and actually a lot of these tips came from our customers that said, uh, and, and honestly, probably the most overarching theme is the whoever's in charge of the of the business needs to be bought in to the idea. And and. Uh, I always say this too. It, it, whether you you know you want to use something like IT Glue, or whether you just want to commit to just creating a whole ton of you know write it write it down on paper, it doesn't really matter. But in either case, the the whoever's in charge of the business needs to agree and needs to understand the importance of documentation. And obviously, it, it's around these exact principles we talked about, the ability to grow the business without adding people, the, to take your existing business and, and find a way to make it more profitable. So I'll tell you, in, in, in our MSP, it's, a, it's a continuously the dials getting uh, turned. So one dial is we want to grow from X to X this year. The other dial is we want to grow our profit from X to X this year. And so when we have those objectives written out and the leadership buys into it, it's a very clear conclusion that, you know, process, process, or what do you want to call it, tomato, tomato, uh, is, is an absolute key. Um, and it's sort of getting that light switch to go on to understand how important that piece is. And understanding that it's a competitive world out there and, and when we have pricing pressure, the companies eventually uh, that will, you know, that will succeed are, are going to be the ones that are able to do things most efficiently because they'll be able to, to not uh, to not worry so much about the pricing pressure. They'll say, okay, well, we've got to drop our price a little bit, but we can still be very profitable because we're so efficient. So, you know, in a nutshell, I'd say the answer is it has to be the law in the business. Uh, and, and it's one of the reasons that both IT Glue and my, uh, my MSP called Fully Managed both have one of the core values of the business that is tied into process. The importance, and, and so it's one of those things that we say, if you don't believe in it, you won't be working here. It sounds harsh, but it's uh, it's absolutely critical to business success. Absolutely, and um, it's nice to hear as well, Chris. That, um, the Canadians have the same problem with tomato tomato as the British do when talking to the Americans. So. Oh, I know. I um, can't even. I, I don't even know which is right. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. Um, we've got another question, uh, which is to do with the implementation of IT Glue. How long does it take, and how do you guys do that? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, in Lean, they talk, I'll answer it in an interesting way. So, in Lean, they talk about this principle that, um, like, where do you focus your energy? So, return on energy. And so, IT Glue is a platform. At the end of the day, it's going to help you document everything. That being said, there is a, a giant blue ocean of documentation out there. So where do we focus our energy? Where, do, where are we going to spend time in the first week, in the first month, in the first quarter? Uh, 
to get going. And so there are some very, very quick hits. So the, the one mistake that we see made, um, which we have to correct, is I'm going to start creating all these procedural documentations. How do I install this? How do I install that? How do I upgrade this? How do I upgrade that? Those, each of those documents can take time to build, and, and it's one of those things, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a journey, not a destination. So if you can uh, start, what we say is you start with the blueprints part of it, which is, on average, it's taking, uh, it takes an average uh, partner of ours probably one to two, one hour to two hours per customer to get that documentation done one time. So it's a one-time commitment. Then you move through the other areas. And, and our team, uh, we have a implementation team that's included with the, with the class of IT Glue that will, will give you unlimited consulting to help you uh, affect change in that area. Because a lot of times what you find is uh, you, we do have documentation, but we, you know, it's, we give it a three or four out of 10. And you want to get to like an eight or nine out of 10. And so you have, no matter how you slice it, there's work to be done. Um, and so it's just focusing the energy on where you're going to get quick returns. So it sounds simple or sounds dumb, but your biggest customers, the, the customers that send you the most tickets, that have the most uh, staff that you're supporting, start there. Uh, those, you, as soon as you start uh, creating the documentation and, and processes in those companies, uh, you will start to see the lift to your service team and, and, and it will, you'll, you'll, you'll pick up those efficiency gains very quickly. Great, thank you very much indeed. That was a very thorough, very thorough answer, so thanks for that. Um, let me just have a look back through the questions. We've got a couple more, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, another question for you, Chris. There's a lot of data that can be stored in IT Glue. How do you secure this data and ensure trust is maintained with our clients? That's a great question. Yeah, very good question. So um, we, we've got the, the answer is there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of controls built into to IT Glue to to create that opportunity to you can go from wide open to highly restricted. So it's a very flexible uh, kind of group structure. Uh, access control, it's ability to, to log into IT Glue that can be very tightly controlled with multi-factor authentication. Uh, on the customer side, even on the engineer side, you can limit what each engineer can see, uh, what levels of, of permissions they have within that. So as an example, you know, who, who is able to see the, the firewall password? Uh, and not only who's able to see it, but who last viewed it? And, uh, and not only who last viewed it, but when was it last changed? Uh, and so you can, you have full audit capabilities, uh, full rollback capabilities, and so you have a lot of uh, uh, control of information that typically there isn't that level of control over. Like if you have a, uh, e even a lot of the tools, like let's just say as an example, LastPass is a password management tool, uh, doesn't have a lot of those capabilities. Uh, you have a, an employee that, that leaves your business, very common scenario, well, I need to know what that employee has accessed in order to secure my customers and, and so that I can let them know that everything that that employee's touched, we ran a report and we know we've, we've adjusted all those passwords accordingly. So that, that's kind of the key to it. And it's very, very uh, flexible and secure uh, access control to IT Globe. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. I hope that answers um, any questions or worries that any of our attendees had about the security of their data. Um, just got one more question, <clears throat> which is to do with um, a demo of your product. We, we have that come through the, the chat window. Um, Chris, just, if it's okay with you, um, Dave Goldie, who's, uh, who I know is also um, on the webinar, listen, listening in but muted, um, he's happy for, for us to share his contact details. Sure. Um, because you guys offer virtual live demos and have a great account executive team that can help if people want to see um, your product and the integration live. So um, this guy is Dave Goldie, and um, his email address is dgoldie, so that's Delta Golf, Oscar Lima, Delta India Echo, at itglue.com. Um, Chris, I don't know if you have anything that you want to add to that. No, that's fine. Yeah, and if you if you uh, the other if you go to the the itglue.com slash webinar, that's the other option. If you fill out that form, uh, we will send you one email, and you can choose to reply to that. And we will definitely never spam you. So if you if you wanted to get connected, uh, feel free to do that as well. And one of our team can reach out and, and make the appropriate connection, and get you a one-on-one -on -one demo. Great. 
Okay, um, I'm just having a look back through the Q&A, but it looks like we've covered everything we needed to, everything that's come in through the chat window during the webinar. So um, thank you very much again, Chris Day, Dave Goldie, and, um, and Len, um, for taking the time today to present. Um, I hope everybody found it, found it useful. Um, contact details are being displayed on the webinar right now. Um, so get in touch, we'd love to hear from you. And otherwise, we look forward to seeing you in the next webinar or an event in your area very soon. Thanks, guys, and thanks to everybody who joined us. Thank you.